Hello friends, today we'll waste an entire battery with acceleration tests in the latest 2024 Model 3 performance. I have a draggy GPS performance meter, the car is charged to 97% and the streets are empty at 7 o'clock on a Sunday morning. We'll start our testing with a quick run in chill mode to get ourselves warmed up. While it's not an exhilarating fast experience, it's still plenty fast compared to the average car out there. Numbers and feel would suggest that it's very close to something like a BMW 320i. Now with the boring out of the way, let's see how quick it moves in standard mode. For me, standard is already incredibly fast, and it's also typically the mode I'll use when I want to overtake someone. Four point one seconds. That is still crazy fast. To put it in perspective, the latest 911 that just came out this year also does it in 4.1 seconds. Now let's test it in insane mode. We'll just go a bit further ahead where it looks like the street is a bit less damp. On that note, on both runs in chill and standard mode, I didn't feel any loss of traction. So the times should be considered more or less accurate. Let's go. Yeah, there is definitely more power in this mode. I felt traction loss early on, so the time can still be improved. We'll try and find a better section up ahead where it's less damp. I know the conditions aren't ideal, but my time is quite limited, so when I have time to make these videos, I have to work with the weather on that day. Here the tarmac looks a lot better. Let's go again. That was undeniably better. Not bad at all with a 3.25. Let's try one more time. And this time 3.29, nearly identical results. I want to see if track mode makes any difference. Let's have a look. Three point one five. The best result so far. Really impressive. That's enough zero to a hundred for now. Let's go out on the autobahn for some high speed measurements. That will also allow us to quickly lower the charge so we can keep testing at various levels. Unfortunately, the fog is still quite heavy at this time. So I had to take a longer drive to get out of it as clearly it wouldn't be safe to drive at faster speeds in these conditions. I will just quickly fast forward through. As it finally starts to clear up, I was hoping to find a straight section, but it's not always so easy here. Here I thought I had a section come up. Eight point seven seconds. Looking at the footage, it does look like it started to go slightly downhill before I reached two hundred. I guess we'll just keep on trying. A bit more fast forwarding until we get to the next good section. You know what? Let me just pretend I'm auto top NL and start from one of these rest areas. Then we'll just need to let this Audi pass so it's clear for us to floor it. And then go. Two hundred in nine and a half seconds. Draggy has the last part of the run slightly uphill, but still counts it as a valid time. With 89% state of charge, it's slightly unimpressive, at least compared to the US Panasonic version. Not even just the Panasonic version. If we would compare it to the BMW i4 M50, that car has been shown to consistently produce times in the eight and a half seconds range. Let's try it one more time and see if we can't get a better result. Reset Draggy and let's go. Eight point eight seconds. Draggy also validated this run without any considerable elevation change. This is probably the flattest section we'll come across. The shaking you see from the car here is from the poorly paved road, not due to the car itself. Don't worry. This time we'll do a run in standard mode. Let's see how big the difference is to insane and track mode. 
10 and a half seconds, still a very fast car even in standard mode. This time would be comparable with something like a Panamera GTS. So yeah, it's fast. For good measure, one more time in insane mode. I guess the lower the state of charge becomes, the harder it will be to reach sub 9 second times. Let's quickly pull in at this rest stop so we can get back into track mode. And we're off once again. Eight point nine, a small improvement compared to last run. You might just get better performance being in track mode. I guess it makes sense. As far as I can tell, there's also some additional cooling going on, which would allow you to put out more power over a longer time. One more run to check for consistency. Yep, that's consistent, just eight hundreds of a second apart. If it's possible to do these nine second runs consistently, then I really don't have a problem with the LG battery, as that is very good. Sure, it's not quite as fast as it could have been, but nine seconds is extremely fast, even if you compare it to petrol cars. Stepping on the throttle out of the roundabout, it will even do a very mini power slide. Perhaps not noticeable in the video as it immediately got grip again, but it definitely gave a tiny playful slide. As we're in public, I also don't want to drive too recklessly, so the drift mode will have to wait for a track day. Here we go with another 200 run, albeit this section is a little bit uphill. Yep, 10 seconds flat. As we're still with 76% charge, let's do a little high-speed driving to run down the batteries. Again, you can see the unevenness of the road from all the shaking. As the speed limit is about to lift, we're now at 67% charge, we're in track mode, and we're going to do another 200 run. And we're back under 10 seconds again. Sixty-four percent state of charge and one more run. Another ten seconds flat. I'll try and stress test the battery with another run right after. Eight point seven, but in all fairness, it was a little downhill this time. And here we go again. Another ten seconds. With the battery down to around sixty per cent, let's try and do some launches and see if there's any noticeable difference to last time. On a quick note, the battery and motor's temperatures are completely stable. We're not even close to the limit. Unless you're pushing hard on an actual track, I don't think anyone in real world conditions need to worry about overheating. And just like that, we're pulling a 3.3 second zero to 100 time. It's almost as if the battery is still at 90 something percent. Let's do some more runs and see if there's any consistency to it. Three 
3.46. In case you didn't notice, even the draggy flew off that time. With the draggy back in place, here's another run in insane mode. 3.38. And let's do another. 3.47. And another. 3.45. This time I run in standard mode. 4.1. Practically identical to the time we did at 90% charge. Let's head back out on the autobahn as it's a lot quicker to drain the battery there. As there was a bit traffic up ahead, I wanted to make some room for us so we had a clear stretch of road. And here we go, track mode to 200. Ten point seven. Last run was ten point one. I can't tell you how nice this is. Sunny day, open highway and a Model 3 performance just cruising at 200 kph. The Autobahn really is something special. Now at 45% state of charge. Again, a lot of shaking on this stretch. 10.9 seconds. And we'll immediately do another run. 10.9 seconds again, back to back. Now at 39% state of charge. One and a half seconds slower, but again, this is an uphill section. And even at a higher charge, this section would be slower than the ones before. I have to say, all these accelerations have started to make me somewhat numb to how fast this actually is. This is probably still faster than 99% of the cars you'll meet on the road, yet it suddenly starts to feel slow when you put the foot down. The best cure for getting a punch back to reality is simply jumping back into a petrol car and go for a drive. Trust me though, you'll immediately want to get back into an electric car, as the fun of that instant torque is just on a whole other level. The temperatures of the motor and battery are completely fine by the way. Ironically, the only thing that overheated on this test was the GoPro, which is why there's an abrupt cut coming up. Unfortunately, with the GoPro overheating, we missed a run at around 9.08, as the GoPro didn't get turned on again till 9.15. I can however see from Draggy that I did an 11.8 seconds run. By my best estimate, that would have put the battery somewhere around 23% state of charge. I was going to do another run here, but as I got a bit further, the visibility just kept getting worse and worse. No need to drive carelessly in these conditions. As my luck would have it, the GoPro also overheated once again. So let's jump out of the car while we do a quick summary of it all. I should also mention that I did another four runs that were registered by Draggy. As I did them after coming off the Autobahn, I estimate that they must have been at around 10 to 13% state of charge. The times were as follows, 3.8, another 3.8, then a 3.86, and finally a 3.77. The consistency here and at that battery level is nothing short of incredible. While the top speed performance definitely suffers once your state of charge lowers, the low speed acceleration almost seems entirely unaffected. Bravo to the LG battery in this regard. Really, that's just an all out incredible performance. What's most impressive is probably the consistency in all the 0 to 100 runs I did. It seems like they were always within a few tenths of a second of each other. I saw Autotop NL complain about some inconsistencies in their results, but I can honestly say that I have not been able to replicate that. 
all results have been incredibly consistent. Perhaps just the high speed results give some variation, but that really comes down to the hilly terrain I have to test in here. I'm sure if I'd be on a drag strip, the results would be much more similar to each other. And with that said, I think this sums up my acceleration test of the 2024 Model 3 performance. If anyone is still watching, I just want to thank you for staying till the end. Watching my videos till the end, as well as liking and commenting really helps out on the algorithm, which in turn helps my channel grow. So again, much appreciated my friend, and I'll hopefully see you again in the next one.